right, friends, so we will continue without the authentic sounds of yard care. I wasn't sure if you all heard that, but I wanted to make sure that you could hear me as we paint together. Um, so now I'm going to go back into the little hopeful baby bloom and just do a little more blending where we have that deep red. So I'm just going back in with some of the lime green and letting the color just drop into there. Let's go ahead and define this a little bit more. You know, maybe there's some little brambles and, and things that accentuate our poppy. And you can achieve this all by the way that you hold your brush and just play. And so that it's not all monochromatic, I'm picking up some more of the Naples yellow so that you have some color interest. And we'll go ahead and drop some in here too. So we'll pick up some more lime green, some of the warm Naples yellow, highlight our poppy stem, and then just keep going, letting the paintbrush dance. And I'm achieving this by using just the point of the brush. You can see how when you press down, you get those just organic little leaf patterns. They're like little tiny bramble baby leaves. And when you look at nature, everything always gets smaller at the top, whether it's a tree or a little fern. So we have tiny leaves at the top. Let's have some go behind our poppy. And then grabbing more lime green because at the bottom it's also going to get darker as we discussed, picking up some more of that little bit of purpley green. You know, having some of those bigger mark making, bigger leaves at the bottom. And you know what I love to do is the cathartic release of painting and go a little Jackson Pollock with me. So with Heart Bloom here, I just want to have a little hint of that hopeful red of our blossoming bloom. And remember that we wrote hope. I would also, I feel inspired to write faith and love. So I'm going to grab one of the pencils that we talked about. We're going to go with the 4B. And we have hope. We have faith. And we have love. And I just wanted to demonstrate like with our erasers how amazing they are. So if you really want to get rid of a line, you're going to use your pink eraser. But if you just want to pick up pigment and lighten something, you can use our rubber eraser. And isn't that nice? You can just kind of play and lighten areas that seem too dark if you want to or just leave it as is. I think that's so cool. And our final touch is that we're going to sign our watercolor. You can use the pencil or you can use this small uh, size three uh, artist brush. And so I'm going to use the brush to sign. You know, the more you practice, the easier it's going to be. Artists typically sign in the lower right hand corner. And it's up to you if you want to sign your full name, your first initial last name. You know, get a sheet of watercolor and just start practicing uh, writing your name. I used to write T. Taylor, um, but now I always write out my full name for my patrons for posterity of, of my work. We painted this in Savannah, so I'm just going to go ahead and write Savannah. And then I've started, let's see, a few little splatters because how cool is that? And that is Payne's Gray. So the color I just used to sign my name is Payne's Gray, P-A-Y-N-E-S. And then I think I'm gonna grab some more of that deep hue and just further deepen the bottom of our poppy to give it more depth. Maybe a little bit here too. Et voila, she is done. So we'll set her aside. All of my paintings are girls, if you all have not noticed. And um, we're going to go ahead and begin with the centers of these poppies. So I'm going to grab, let's see, the 
size 6 brush again. I'm going to get some of that limey green, just that beautiful warm yellow, and just do two poppy centers that are here. And I'm going to let those dry while uh, we paint around the outside of our poppies. We're going to use our square brush again. And this is called painting in the negative. And painting is in the negative is when you accentuate something to make it pop forward and to give it definition. So let's like load up our brush with lime green. And then I'm actually going to go into the Payne's gray on that one corner. And with that darker corner, I'm going to, at the bottom, because at the bottom it's always darker, I'm going to go ahead and accentuate around our poppies and see how you can now see the beautiful edge of that poppy bloom. And then I'm going to make sure to keep the darkest edge under the flower because that's where the shadow would be. So always think about light and shadow. So our light can be coming from this direction. So the shadow would be cast here, like below into the right of the poppies. Let's grab some more of the green. And we'll start to kind of lighten up as we go towards the sky. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of the turquoise. And let's see. Let's go ahead and grab some white and mix that to create a beautiful cerulean blue sky. And it's up to you how blue and dark you want to get. But I'm only going to add that pigment and then I'm going to just grab water and use water uh, to define the rest of the sky. And again, always at the top you're going to have the darker hues just as you do at the bottom so it's like a mirror at the top you have darker hues at the bottom you have darker hues and as you get towards the horizon line you want them to get lighter and lighter uh, to create that beautiful horizon line and then we're going to bring our limey green up just as we did in our first lesson to create a patina I'm just grabbing water here scrubbing it in a little more turquoise. Put a little turquoise down there just because it's pretty. And um, I'm going to grab more of the limey green and let's go back to that deep Payne's gray. Love this deep hue and that little splatter is one of our beauty and imperfection moments. I'm just gonna use that striation that we've used in our poppies to bring that darker down, the darker hue. And bring this up to accentuate. Here's a little shadow. There is a little shadow. I'm going to wash out my brush and grab just the lime green and just drop lime green in. Drop it in. And again, we don't want to mess with it too much. We want the watercolor to work its own magic. So I'm going to wash out the brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of this gold. This is where the beautiful God light comes in, the divine light. And it's just coming onto the poppy. And I'm using my little splatters just to create areas of interest and to bring some of that gold down. Go ahead and grab a little more gold. Let's just let it play. All right, so let's allow this to dry and finish our third and third piece, and then we'll come back to our two poppies, you and me. All right, so here is our beauty and simplicity poppy bloom. And I actually think that's what I'm going to write, is beauty and simplicity. So using the 4B pencil, I'm just going to accentuate the poppy and write beauty in simplicity. 
All of my writing is stream of conscious, and if you have a journal, try writing stream of conscious, where you just write uh, and you don't judge what you're writing, and you just, it's this cathartic release, and you can pull from some of that writing and apply it to your work. And this one, I'm going to actually sign with my pencil. Savannah. And then on the back, I'm going to write the year that it was created. Et voila. And I th think with this one, I'm going to grab a lot of water on this uh, large round brush and pick up, you know, just some of that beautiful gold and just highlight our words. And then also have some of the little splatters that unite the composition and bring that gold down. And in this piece, I think we have areas where we can uh, just emphasize and uh, work some darker hues into the poppy to give it more depth. So I'm going to go into that Payne's Gray and just at the bottom do a little swoop. And then I think a little swoop here, wash out the brush, grab some lime green, and a little bit of purpley blue, and just deepen the hues of the poppy and the stem just to give our poppy more depth and interest. And I think too, if you would like to in this piece, you can grab the lime green and some of the Naples yellow and you can you know, add some of those little brambles. And look at that beautiful happy accident here where you know, as you make the brushwork, the places where it was wet is actually going to create a beautiful organic uh, bleed. So let's just keep adding. And the more you paint, the easier even this spontaneous little dancing brush stroke will get. Just using the tip of the brush, I'm making some fine lines. And you know what, with this piece, it is summer. Well, it is spring, almost summer, which means it's almost lavender season. So let's go into that purpley blue and create a little bit of lavender some expressionistic lavender. And we've talked about how in nature at the bottom you have the larger blooms. Everything's larger in the foreground and as you reach the horizon line, as you reach the sun, you start to have those smaller little petals. And if you're painting a landscape, smaller little trees. And I'm even using some of the purple just to create the stems and then you know what's going to happen. All right, so let's let this dry. Actually, I'm going to get a little bit of the lavender and mix in some white, just so it's not all the same value and go in. And I'm squinting my eyes while I'm painting because it shouldn't be about realism. It's, you know, expressionism and just really plain and leading with your heart in your work. Like, let your heart make the decisions. And I think it'd be nice to have like a little bit of lavender here. Okay, perfect. And let's go ahead and go back to our other blooms. All right, perfect. So you can see here, it's still a little wet, wet in the center center, but around it, it is dry. 
So let's go ahead and grab our brown brush and just uh, fill it with water and then grab some of the paints gray and let's just one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and grab some more paints gray and do the same thing over here and it'd be larger on the larger puppy. You want the center to be pretty round, but of course it doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm just going to grab some water. I'm gonna wash out the brush. And I'm just letting that water touch the edge of where we just painted. And it will create those beautiful little areas that you're seeing. And it just blends so it's deeper and darker in the center and it lightens as you get um, closer to where the light would hit the petals. So we are officially almost done. We are going to, let's see, use our pencils and sign our work. And actually, I think it may be best for us to let this dry and then let's go into it uh, with our brush. And we will write two poppies, you and me, and we'll sign this work. 